Hello folks, so here's my latest capture. It's the Pleiades star cluster. And it's one of the most famous star clusters in the night sky. And I used my approach again of doing only 15 second exposures. I captured around, I think it was 877 images, each one 15 seconds. And I think the total exposure time comes to about 3.65 hours. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. This is the final image, and I used my Rasa telescope and one-shot color camera. And what I want to do today is just show you what it looked like from start to finish. So um, let's get started. Now this is what a 15-second exposure looks like. And it's always very scary to me because I'm always thinking, is that it? How is this going to look when I'm done? There's not much here. So... I just have to have a little faith that if I capture enough exposures, I'll have something to, to work with. Now, this is what my original stacked image looked like. And I just thought I would compare the original stacked image to the final image I worked with. So you can see what the difference is from start, from the very beginning to the very end. So the first thing I did was a crop. I cropped away the, the, the edges that I didn't like, and I did a mirror flip because my Rasa telescope inverts the image, so I have to do a mirror flip to put it right. So the next thing I did was a DBE. And keep in mind, I know maybe my flow differs from a lot of other people's flow, and what I, what I usually tell people is I have um, four... NASA astronomy pictures of the day, APODs. And so I, I kind of view those as my get out of jail free card. So if people don't like the way I do things, well, the guy does have some APODs, so let's, let's cut him some slack. <laughs> you know, it, it, it gives me a little leeway, I think, and people are less harsh on me that way. So yeah, the next thing I did, this is the DBE, and the what I didn't like were these halos. I mean, I really dislike halos because I know um, they're just artifacts from the equipment I use. And whenever I see halos, I'm like, oh, I got halos, what am I going to do? I'm going to throw away the date and forget about it. That's how much I hate halos. But I come to my senses and I think, okay, I'll, I'll just have to deal with them and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, the next thing I did was Pix Insights Photometric Color Calibration. And let's see if we can even see any difference from my previous. Sometimes I don't really see much difference, and sometimes it's so wacky I don't even use it. So let, let's see here. This one on the left is before, and this one on the right is after. And I think the, the photometric actually did give me a nicer blue in, that, in the data. Is that what it's supposed to do? I ran it, and I like the result, so this time I'm keeping it. And this is what it looks like after I ran a histogram to make it nonlinear. And after that, I ran Starnet to make the picture starless because it's easier to work with the picture when there's no stars. And that's what it looks like without the stars. And this is what my stars look like. And I will add them back later. And this is what it looks like when I worked on these halos. The one that was here and the one that was here. I don't know if I did a good enough job, but that that's how it... Let me show you how it looked before. So here's my halos before, and this is what it looks like after. I probably could have done it better. I went a little bit too... I, I did come back to fix this one later in the process. And uh, so that's... I know I could have done it better, but I probably went a little bit too fast. On broadband, I don't usually take my time as much as I do on narrowband. But let me show you, though, just uh, what I did to try and get rid of those. I, I did a, a clone stamp very softly on them. Let, let just, I'll give you a little demonstration here. Don't hold me to it. I'm just sure there's a ton of better ways to do this. You don't probably want to use clone stamp, but I put it on the softest setting, raised that up to about 200, and I just very lightly went around the edges to see if I could do stuff. Just 
without making it look fake, <laughs> I tried just to get rid of those harsh, hard edges. Stuff like that, you know, just... Yeah, but I, I would do it better, take my time a little bit more. But that's that's kind of this what I do for that kind of thing. So, anyway, uh, but I'm, I'm sure you have much better ways to do that if you're experienced. And this is what it looks like after I sharpen it. I used deconvolution and unsharp mask after I protected the some areas that I didn't want to sharpen with the mask. And you can see um, it's definitely sharper here, although I did notice I lost some sharpness along the way after this because when you do denoise and other stuff and so i think the the final image was not as sharp as it could have been but i could always go back to it and work on it and what i did notice though i have some artifacts here starnet is not completely perfect and it does leave artifacts that i did have to fix later i think i used clone stamp to get rid of these artifacts here these straight lines and now I hear, I, I, I ran some denoise, tried to run denoise just on the background and avoid trying to denoise the areas I sharpened. And that's what that looks like. And in this picture, I reduced the star sizes. So, um, it always looks a little better if you have nebulosity with um, smaller stars, so the stars the bigger stars tend to hide nebulosity, so you want to kind of shrink your stars. And <clears throat> this is when I put the stars back. That's how it looks um, getting closer to the final image. And after this, I ran another DBE to try and uh, make the background look a little better. You can see um, uh, that's my DBE, and this is the image how it looked before that. I think uh, the DBE might have got rid of a few more gradients that I still had lingering around. And this is interesting. This is the first one that I considered my final image, but it never stays that way. Whenever I think something is my final image, I, I sit on it for a little while and I think, hmm, I wasn't really liking this. I thought I could have displayed more nebulosity around the, the perimeter here. And so what I did is, I should have done this sooner in the process, but I extracted the luminance and then re-added it back. And um, if, you, if you have experience, you know what I'm talking about. And this is after I re-added luminance back to it, and let's compare it to the previous one that I considered final. I, I think um, it's less dark and it, it, it has more nebulosity around the picture. Can, can you see that the, this one on the right has more nebulosity? I, I definitely like this one better. And this one over here um, is where I made some final touch-ups. I made it a little brighter, a little more colorful with saturation. And I had some magenta lingering around. You could sort of see it uh, all around the picture. And let me show you if you, a lot of people know this trick. This is my final image, but let me show you how I got rid of that magenta. And a lot of people know this. It's really simple to do. You invert the image. And when you invert the image, the magenta shows up as green. And all you have to do is you run SCNR and Pixel Sight, which gets rid of the green. And then you invert it back and your magenta is gone. So that's uh, very close to the final image. And I think on this one, I just, uh, the, the one that's final, I made the blacks a little more black. So what do you think? I don't think I like this rotation. I think I prefer it, um, I don't think I like that either. I had it, which way did I have it? One more time. I think I like that rotation. What do you think? That's all I got, folks. I hope you liked it. But one more thing is I can tell I lost some sharpness. I might still work on this, but I just wanted to show you what I went through. And um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. <laughs>